This is how matchmaking ranks are distributed in Europe. But if you plot the same rank distribution graph for North America, you'll get something shockingly different. These clearly aren't the same shape, and this contrast may contribute to a wildly different matchmaking experience between geographic regions. I'm Jarrett from Leadify, and I'm going to walk you through a few implications of these CSGO rank distributions from across the globe. Let me give you a peek at all the regions we'll analyze today. There are two distinct shapes. The rank distribution in Europe, South America, and Asia approximates what's called a normal distribution. But in North America and Oceania, the distribution shows a decreasing behavior. But what do these shapes actually mean? The normal distribution, also known as a bell curve, is a common statistical phenomenon when dealing with large populations. This distribution is centered around an average value and operates on the idea that most individuals in the population will tend to cluster near that average. The further away you get from the average, the less likely it is that any given individual will fall into that categorization. You can apply this to all sorts of attributes, with the classic example being height. You expect a very similar number of people to be above average as are below average. When a large population is not distributed according to a normal distribution, it means that there's some sort of underlying trend disrupting the data. The matchmaking algorithm is what causes the shape of the distribution in the case of CSGO ranks. There are a variety of reasons that a matchmaking algorithm would want to intentionally disrupt the distribution of the player base. For example, maybe it's desirable to only have a certain number of global elite players. This could lead to a slight wall in progression where people get to LEM and have a hard time ranking up, such as we see in the Europe chart. The same thing can be seen with Silver 1 in the NA chart. There's likely something dictating that there should be fewer Silver 1 players, leading to a huge pileup in Silver 2. But what about the overall shape of the NA graph? This is clearly quite far from the normal distribution we saw approximated in the European data. If we operate on the assumption that CSGO skill at least approximately follows a normal distribution, the shape of the ranks in North America is extremely concerning. We would expect low silver to be filled with players that are all relatively far outliers in terms of skill, but instead the majority of the player base has been pushed down to this rank region. Now, the players that are unusually far below average have to play against people that are much more highly skilled. In North America, the average difference between the top and bottom rank in a lobby is 5.07 ranks. For this example, let's round it to 5 ranks. This means that if the lowest rank in a lobby is Gold Nova 3, you would expect the highest rank in the lobby, on average, to be DMG. Similarly, you would expect a game with a Silver 1 to tend to have the highest rank in the lobby be Silver Elite Master. In this typical Silver 1 to SEM spread, if we look at the normal distribution, this means that all of the players competing with each other are within the bottom 6 bars of the histogram. This accounts for the lowest 15.6% of players in the game for the ideal case of normally distributed ranks. However, with the spread the way it is in the current NA rank distribution, this means that the game instead could pull from anyone within the bottom 51.9% of the player base. On paper, this seems extremely detrimental to the experience of everyone involved. For the lower skill players in these ranks, this means that they're more likely to face off against players that completely outclass them. For the higher skilled players, this means that their teammates are more likely to lack the expected level of mechanical ability or strategic knowledge. While some people may have fun fragging out against opponents that don't stand a chance, I think most would agree that in the long run they would rather play fair matches and see their rank progress according to their true skill level. In Europe, we see the exact opposite situation occurring. The player base is concentrated slightly above the midpoint in the rank scale, with a long, slow lead up to this point through the lower ranks. This means that newer players get eased into the game. If someone is brand new to tactical shooters, they can grind out a bunch of games in Silver 1 to get their footing. I know smurfing and cheating are real issues, but for the sake of this analysis, let's focus on legit games. If we ignore smurfing and cheating, these new players are basically guaranteed to have lower skilled opponents. As they improve and start to rank up, they can join the pack of average players according to the normal distribution. This slow progression to ease new players into the game completely crumbles as this distribution approaches what we see in NA and Oceania though. Shifting the average rank way down means that newer players will have the worst experience of any group in the game. Instead of being able to boot up matches against other new players, they will be immediately put into lobbies with people that have much more experience in the game, but are unable to progress out of the bottom portion of the rank spread. This skill mismatch is particularly detrimental to someone who's new to the game since they don't have any baseline to compare these unbalanced matches to. An experienced DMG player could get wrecked by somebody dropping 40 on the other team and realize that this is an unusually skilled player. However, in lower ranks, these new players may just get discouraged because they think these drastic mismatches are how the game is supposed to be played. This could present a huge obstacle for growing the player base if those at low ranks frequently burn out before even learning the basics of the game. You may think this poor distribution is related to player count. 
After all, this data for Europe is composed of over 2 million accounts that were active in the region between May of 2020 and May of 2021. The data for North America is only composed of 550,000 accounts from the same period, or about a quarter as many. The problem described here gets even worse if we look at Oceania, with only 70,000 active accounts and an alarming rank distribution. So is a decrease in the region's player base to blame for this bad distribution? South America and Asia both have rank spreads that are much closer to the normal distribution. Both of these regions have fewer players analyzed for this study than in North America, with Asia totaling at 460,000 and South America at only 300,000. So this dispels the idea that these non-Gaussian distributions may arise just because a region has a relatively small player count. Visual inspection suggests that these distributions are much more normal, but let's confirm it mathematically real quick. Running a normality test in Python reveals that Asia has the distribution closest to a normal distribution. South America and Europe aren't far behind, but then there's a huge gap until we reach North America and Oceania. I've put some resources in the description if you'd like to understand what's going on behind the scenes in this normality test. What I want you to take away from this is that Europe does not simply have a better distribution because of the fact that there are more players in their servers. While we do not currently know the cause, there's a statistically significant difference between the rank distributions in these regions. Unfortunately, there weren't enough accounts from Africa and the Middle East to generate the required data for this study, which is why these two regions are sadly omitted from the analysis. We wanted to make sure we focused on the conclusions that were directly available from the data itself, and I hope you have a better understanding of some of the statistical principles that are in play when looking at large populations. Please let us know in the comments if you have any of your own insights. Some people might find it more rewarding to try and improve at certain skills rather than chase the nebulous goal of ranking up. If that's you, head on over to leadify.com and sign up for free today to start tracking your own stats and compare them to any rank.